I will now be discussing continuous time systems using discrete time tools. So we are going to be analyzing them in detail. Okay, so here's the pen tool. Yes, analyzing continuous time systems using discrete time tools okay to understand uh, we need to take an example let's consider that we have a tank T just filled with water to the height H we have a leak L the pressure of this tank at this point when t equals 0 is p and the rate with which the water comes out of this tank is r all right so for this condition let's assume when time t equals 0 can we safely assume that the amount of water which is coming out of the tank will be highest when t equals 0 and so will the pressure be pressure will also be max when t equals 0 can we conclude that yes because the system has just started seeping water out of the tank through this leak l correct so now as the water drains when the water is sort of you know draining out and the level starts to decrease the pressure and the rate with which it falls also decreases can we conclude that yes we can because the amount of water is decreasing so the pressure won't be same on the height and so will and so the speed won't be same as well correct so we can safely conclude that the rate of change of height with respect to time is actually equal to a function of height correct so the rate in which the height of the water changes because it is seeping out of this vessel with respect to time is actually a negative function of height where we still don't know what exactly the function of h is at this point of time but we're just assuming it is some kind of a function f of h the negative sign here is because the water is seeping outwards right so this becomes my first equation now just to uh, for the sake of not having functions in the system and for the simplicity of the overall model let's just try to put in a function value inside the first equation that we have okay so let's assume for now that this system or this vessel right at this point actually has a linear leak all right so there's a linear relationship between the amount of water which is seeping and the height through which it is seeping so basically what i'm trying to say is f of h which is the function of h is sort of directly proportional to the height so this becomes my second correlation right so if i replace first and sorry this is second first and second so th over dt that is the rate of change of height is directly proportional to the negative of height this becomes my third important equation let me just yes so this becomes my third equation let me write this again so what was it the rate of change of height with respect to time is directly proportional to the negative of the height because the water is seeping out and we have a linear leak in this case right? now we know we've studied in maths and physics both when we have to change the proportional sign we have to replace it with we have to sorry we have to replace it with an equal to sign and then add a constant so just to see what kind of a constant we have to add this is height per distance sorry this is height per time which is distance by time right so the missing constant that we have here should be some inverse relation of time because we have a time here and we also have a distance here so dh of dt if i was supposed to equate it becomes minus h over some t where t is the where t is the time constant added 
just for the generic sake of understanding um, whenever we are supposed to derive equations in which involves referential rephrase with time the the constant that is generally added on a continuous system is basically is always time okay so yeah this is sort of again a generic assumptions being used by many different models and so dh over dt equals minus h over t this becomes our next important equation and i guess this is fourth okay and if it is not then it can be three but i don't wish like scrolling all the way to the left so let's just call it four for now now does this resonate to anything that we have already studied um, in digital circuits so let's say if this was a resistor r and we had this voltage v and this was a capacitor so the voltage across the capacitor draining out through the resistor was dv by dt which used to be equal to minus 1 upon rc multiplied by v so here rc is basically the constant which is t from our equation fourth this is the t from our equation 4 and this is actually called as the leaky circuit situation as well okay so now i will move this here and i will rub it over let me just change this up okay i got this seems like the button isn't working correctly so it took some time but okay okay so the equation let me just change this yes so the equation that we actually derived was rate of change of height with respect to time was minus of h over t where t was some constant right now there's one thing about discrete time signals that we already know i'll just draw this real quick so if this was time and this is some value that we are actually measuring so let's say the strength of the signal in time t1 is 1 the strength of signal t2 is going above let's just assume it's 8 here and then somewhere here this is t3 and the signal strength is let's say somewhere 4 here all right so we already know the discrete time signal actually tells you the state of the signal on a time stamp like what is the state on t1 what is the state of t2 yeah what is the signal state or what is the strength of a system on a specific time stamp phase right so we can always say that um, when we are trying to approximate a continuous time differential equation so we have a differential equation differential equation under continuous which is this is c continuous so that stands for a continuous time frame so if we have a differential equation which is on a continuous time frame and we have to map it on discrete say let's say the time stamp is t then it actually becomes h of n for a continuous differential equation whose function will be h of n of t where t is the timestamp that we are taking into consideration while trying to understand the continuous system using a discrete system analysis right because we are actually measuring the state of this this system at this point so if let's say this is system a we are trying to understand its state at t1 and so the continuous equations for the whole time frame is actually a subset of this t1 and so it becomes h of n of t where t is t1 and on a discrete level it just becomes h of n because that's all sorry h of n 
because that's all we are going to be analyzing at this point of time all right so i'll just move this again now to raise this just one second So now according to our leaky tank equation, we have dH, oops, yes, dH over dT was equals to minus H of T. This was the most valuable equation and putting it 1 in this case. So when we started at T equals 0, the, deri the derivative for this will be derivative becomes minus H naught of t right that's like the second equation so let's assume for now that dh over dt stays fixed it stays fixed for a whole time whole time okay and the height falls and the height falls by approx H naught of capital T, whatever distance it has traveled upon time stamp. So I'll just draw a small diagram here again just to reciprocate, just to bring back what we were discussing. This was the height H, right? And this was the leak L. So let's at T naught, let's assume the height is H naught, and so it's given by the relation minus H naught of T. Let's say after 3 seconds, when capital T is 3, okay, when this has actually seeped to 3 seconds, the distance now becomes what? This whole H0 minus this, uh, the new timestamp that we have at 3 seconds, T multiplied by H0 of T from our original equation. So if I extend this out, this becomes my third equation taking h naught outside this is what minus t over constant t this is capital t okay just this becomes my fourth equation so h1 becomes h naught of 1 minus t capital t over constant t right this is the fourth important equation now through induction or any other mathematical reasoning let's just see what the nth result will be or what will be the value if you were taking the derivative over an nth interval of time let me just rub this real quick so i actually didn't want to break down this video because it's important that all of the thing that we are discussing is sort of introduced in one single section just so that it is clear but in case um, you think it's not the best idea just let me know so um, the equation that we derived was h of 1 which is the new height of our tank when some x or y amount of water has spilled out is actually h naught minus h naught of into the time when we are measuring it divided by the constant time t so h1 becomes h naught out 1 minus capital t over our constant t this was for h of 1 so if it was h of n, we can safely conclude it will be h of n minus 1, 1 minus t over capital t, correct? This can be safely concluded because when it's h of 1, this is h naught o. So for h of n, will be n minus 1 and minus capital T, which is the time we are measuring the state where exactly the water resides on the tank, all right? So this is our final equation. If I have to convert this equation, this equation right here, 6, let's call this 6, the most important equation. If I have to sort of reduce this equation or if I have to bring this equation to a closed form, 
closed form it actually becomes h of n equals h naught into 1 minus capital T constant T raised to the power of n that becomes the generic yeah, equation or the solution to our problem statement and uh, for the sake of reducing the size of the video and I'm assuming the viewers who are viewing this content already knows what a closed form is and how we can actually derive equation 7 from equation 6 I'm not explicitly doing the derivative here but just in case it's not clear you can leave down the comments and I'm happy to explain how we can actually create closed forms from within an equation of a system all right so this is pretty much it now we can actually see how um, how effective it is to use a discrete system tool to find analysis for continuous systems and this approach is called as Euler's estimation so let's see how well this model actually fits by doing an approximation and I think I'll be covering that in the second video but um, that's how um, yeah, so I'll probably co cover that in the second video if it is needed, but I don't see how practically how much will that be needed. But just to summarize here, this is how we use a discrete time signal or a discrete system tool to predict continuous system models. And this is actually called as Euler's approximation. Okay, thank you.